to this close-up video of the very first Five and Mood Special Edition. I'm Kate, the Conversation Manager for the English-speaking community, and I'm here today with Sana, who is the Conversation Manager for the Dutch-speaking community. Uh, as usual, we've teamed up with some Five and Mood colleagues and friends, and we're really excited to show you the patterns and the fabrics we have for this issue. That's right, Kate. This is our very first special edition. This time we got inspired by existing patterns out of our own collection, but we turned them into brand new patterns. But not only that, this uh, edition also is a collaboration with the MoMU, that's the Mode Museum, the Fashion Museum of Antwerp, and we came up with one pattern together with them. So we're really excited to be able to bring you this in close-up video from the Fashion Museum of Antwerp. They've got an exhibition on at the moment, which is called From 2D to 3D to 3D Animation. And it's an insight into the pattern making of the 20th century. To complement the exhibition, as Sana mentioned, we've come up with a new pattern and it's called Lucy. You can also find it in the magazine and the museum shop. And it is a bed jacket, which is inspired by the fashion of the 1930s. Well, sometimes people ask us, how do we come up with the names for all those patterns? Well, you must know we already have 260 patterns in our collection. That means 260 different names. And fun fact, most of the time those names are chosen randomly, but this time we got inspired by very important women in history to name our patterns after. Of course, we worked with Politex, our fabric partner, to come up with um, the fabric collection for this issue. And also, we've teamed up with Metaler to bring you the perfectly matching threads to go with the fabric. Now, let's dive into our new collection, shall we? Yeah, sounds great. Meet the Amelia jumpsuit. Amelia is named after the first female pilot in history to fly across the Atlantic solo and non-stop. The Amelia jumpsuit is inspired by our Ayla blouse, which is what I'm wearing right now. Um, it has short grown on sleeves and also a back yoke. But as you can see, there are quite some differences. Um, with the Amelia jumpsuit, we have here a standing collar. We've also got a front yoke and a concealed button placket as well. Other things to point out, um, there is a belt with quite a lot of top stitching on it, which I think gives it a nice effect. And of course, we also have side seam pockets. Now onto the styling, where I really like Erika's version. She combined her jumpsuit with some fancy sneakers and some nice socks. I absolutely adore Ilse's version. She went for a festive look, where she combined it with a turtleneck, some high heels and some glittery socks. For fabric, we would recommend something in a medium weight with both body and drape. For our samples, we chose a blended fabric, which is a mix of bamboo, recycled polyester and a little bit of elastane for the extra comfort factor. The pink one, as you can see here, is a little bit textured um, and the purple one is matte and you can see that they give a completely different effect. Okay, so Erica, you're a sewista. Why do you like this jumpsuit so much? Yes, I like this jumpsuit because of the line of stitching across the front and at the belt. The stitching makes my shoulders look broader uh, and the stitching is so beautiful. And next time I might wear it with heels and jewellery for a dressed up version because I like Ilse styling a lot as well. Great. Now do you remember our Hunter from edition 7? Well that was exactly our muse for this waistcoat called Elba. Um, Elba has a lot of elements that are very in trend now. It, has, it is double breasted, it has lapels and it has the welt pockets on top and here below. And there are also shoulder pads to give some extra volume to the shoulders. Now there is always a great demand for lining. So this time the instructions teach you how to do a lining as well as a back fend. Now lining and a coat, always a challenge. Kathleen, do you see yourself sewing this waistcoat? Yes and no. Um, I find the lining is really sophisticated, um, really quite beautiful, but I'm a bit nervous about these uh, welt pockets. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't let the welt pockets um, put you off. Uh, they can be a bit of a challenge, but for the top welt pockets, we have an instruction on our website because it's the same as the Adria ones. Now, to give you some tips and advice, make sure to keep an eye on our socials because we'll be putting a video online on how to do the back fence, and we'll do that when the Elba pattern is pattern of the week. 
So on first glance, a sleeveless coat is maybe not something that you would wear every day, but we really chose to make a statement with it, as you can see from the different fabrics that we have here. So we have got a winter version in a fuzzy wool that Erica is wearing. That's the mint green. And we've gone for more of a suit vibe with Kathleen in her green one, and also with Ava in her peachy one. In terms of styling, there's many different options. So as you can see, Ava has gone for a very formal, sophisticated look with all of the neutrals. Uh, we've got something a bit more casual with jeans and we've also got a skirt as well. So go nuts and wear it with whatever you like. Adding to our collection of uncomplicated casual basics, we have the Freya trouser and we loved it so much that we chose four different fabrics for it to make four different samples as you can see here. The Freya trouser features an elastic waist, um, it has inverted box pleats which have been stitched down a little at the top and it's also got slash pockets and a faux fly. If you've never made trousers before, then this is a good place to start. It's not too complicated a pattern. And on our website, we have also a number of tutorials on common trouser adjustments. Now, summertime, wintertime, party wear, lounge wear, make the legs longer or shorter. Now, our samples are in a bamboo blend, a corduroy or a faux leather, but actually Freya can handle a lot of different types of fabrics, such as even denim or a very flowy viscose. Or you could even go for a knitted fabric, such as a heavy jogging or a French terry or a Punta de Roma. Actually, Freya can have it all. If you like trousers, then be sure to also have a look at the Benita trouser and the Peaches trouser, which is where um, the Freya takes its inspiration. The Benita is uh, also with slash pockets and you can find a replay of the sew along on our website. And the Peaches is a double pleated uh, fixed waist trouser as well. So I would wear this actually for work. I'm a teacher, so I sell this to, to stand in front of a classroom and I wear this with a checkered blazer, but you can also wear it with a more solid color, um, with a blouse and some heels, but even with some sneakers and a casual sweater, I would think. Very nice, Eva, thank you. Now, meet Lucille. This is the dress for party season. And if you've been sewing fiber mood for a while now, you might recognize three different patterns in this one. Because we were inspired by the sleeves from Tanita, but the wrap from Millie. And you can also see the Camilla twisted element right here. Now, I can say inspired by very easily, but in fact, you should know that all patterns were designed from scratch. So as you can see, there are a lot of untrend elements in this pattern. There is a cutout at the midriff, but if you tie it differently, you can also choose to make it not visible. Uh, furthermore, there is the puffed sleeve. Here you have it with an elastic band, but you can also choose to leave the elastic band out. And then we have the panel skirt to give a very flared look. Just a couple of construction notes as well when you're making the Lucille. Start with your bust measurements because this is where it needs to fit. And then after that, you can choose your waist measurement. So be sure to measure it really well because of the way that this is constructed, uh, this really needs to fit perfectly. So on our website, we will put up a tutorial on how to measure and how to make any adjustments that you need to do. And because the dress is very fitted, we have an invisible zip closure at the back. I just want to go to Erica because I love her green dress and ask you, where are you going to go with your dress? Yeah, I love to go to a wedding in this dress. I like the fabric, it's so flowy and the color is just amazing. It's really good on you. Thank you. No, well, that's true. Actually, we recommend a fabric with, with a flowy drape to it, such as a silk or a viscose. But if you want to go for more volume, then you can go for a broderie anglaise or even a linen, or for more body, go for a poplin. This is the Lucy jacket and this is the special pattern that we have produced in collaboration with the Fashion Museum of Antwerp. So this jacket is inspired by a 1930s bed jacket and it was an evening garment that was worn over perhaps a long dress for going out or it could be worn over a negligee in the privacy of your own home. Fibermood has interpreted this historical piece and given it a temporary touch. In our version, we've kept a lot of the original elements, such as the V-shaped neckline, the geometrical form, the slightly shaping of the cuff and the grown-on sleeve. 
The pattern also is lined, um, and Lena, if you would like to show us your lining, I think it's really beautiful in a satin. And she also has pockets. Of course, they're optional, but we always really love pockets. As you can see, we've made two versions in a quilted fabric, and for this one, we have chosen a jacquard, but I can also imagine it in something with more drape for a completely different effect. And Eva, can I tell you, I really love your meal pants because I'm wearing the same. Uh, this was the very first collaboration of the Fashion Museum of Antwerp and it is in our edition too. This is the Marsha jacket and we made it so that you can wear it through all seasons from autumn to winter um, and also through to spring. What makes Marsha very special is that she has removable sleeves, um, as you can see here. The zip is not actually as complicated as you might think, um, so just follow the instructions closely and they will guide you through. You can also check our website for the fully illustrated and worded instructions and we will also make a video tutorial for those of us um, who prefer a different kind of learning. If you wanted to simplify this um, make, you could also just leave out the pockets or you could leave out the collar. And I think for springtime, this might actually look really nice in a denim as well. Now, this jacket is inspired by our Frida jacket and we style it two times very differently. First of all, we style it with our LOD dress. If you can show it, Ilse, it looks lovely on you. So a very nice look, but then second look is very different. It's very streetwise. We style it with some tough jeans and boots. Now we made Marsha in two kinds of fabric. We made it in quilted fabric and we made it in a teddy fabric. But I think Marsha could also look very good in a full leather or in a denim or even a woven jacquard. Lots of styles. Finally, we also have a similar jacket for the kids and this is the Mickey Body Warmer and it runs from ages 2 to 14. I like this uh, jacket. Uh, it's a match with my kids. It's a really nice one. <laughs> This is our Nelly dress and I absolutely adore it. Um, the sleeves and the short midi length with the uh, everything flaring towards the hem um, is a winning combination in my book. Um, we've kept it quite simple um, with this dress so we made it in something with a drape and if you would turn around for me Ava you can see that we uh, closed it with a button and loop closure as well. The dress is inspired by the mirror dress, which I think I've made myself about three times now, and it's one of our most popular dresses at Five Mood. It has a similar bodice, but also with tears, and you can find that on our website. Well, actually, this pattern is rather easy to sew, and as you can see, it's also easy to style. Just uh, put on some boots, maybe sandals, a stocking, and you're ready to go. Now, when you look at the fabrics, uh, fabric with a soft drape will do. We chose a changeant and a very light viscose. Now you could also go for a more structured uh, fabric such as woven jacquard or if you're thinking festive, go sequins. Now Eva, I really like your version, it's a more festive look, but if you would sew it, which alterations would you make and which kind of fabric would you choose? Well, as much as I like this festive look as my, myself as well, I would think to make it in maybe a very fine flowy corduroy fabric and maybe lengthen it a little bit so you can take it on winter's walks and sitting by the fire. Very nice. This is the Octavia wrap dress and she is a classical wrap dress with a twist. We actually have another pattern called Charlotte which was the inspiration for this one but where Charlotte had a tulip shaped skirt with a flounce, um, with Octavia we've gone the other way and we've put all the details in the bodice. So we've got pleats on the sleeve head here and it tapers towards the wrist. Now, when you look at the bodies, there's some gathers here, that's for waist definition. Uh, this version closes with the snaps, but you can also choose to close it with a tie, as on Ilse's version. And there's also a lot of fabric to the skirt, just to give it some swish. Swish on, ladies. <laughs> for fabric, we have chose fabric with quite a lot of drape to this, but you could also choose something with a lot more body. So if you wanted to go for something like linen, you could even go for poplin if you really wanted to, and that would really bring out the um, gathers in the sleeves. But as usual, it's sewing, so do whatever you want. If you're into sailor shirts, then we've got something very special for you, and this is the Ronda Top. 
It's inspired by our Harmony top, which you might have seen before, which has um, a shorter bib and puff sleeves. And for Rhonda, we've decided to go for a very clean, streamlined look. So you can see that we've got a bib that extends all the way down the front. We've got a button back closure, and we've also got slightly shorter side panels. And I think together it makes for a very elegant top. So actually, this stuff isn't that hard to sew, but if you don't like the button placket, then you can leave it out. You use invisible uh, zip or you use just snaps. This is also a very nice stuff to lengthen or to shorten. So you can lengthen it for a more tunic version or you shorten it for a more cropped version. I chose a more casual outfit with my white top and blue jeans, but I could also choose to wear it with a butter skirt like Kate did. And since it's a quite a see-through fabric, I chose to wear a black top that really pops with my shoes. I really like this combination. It would be definitely something I would make and wear. It's a combination with the penis skirt and I think it's perfect for uh, the upcoming holidays or any party that I would like to go to. I think, um, yeah, I would also uh, wear the top with this uh, particular Gemma skirt. It's also another pattern from our catalogue. Um, for fabric, uh, for the Ronda top, again, I would choose something woven, uh, something with a lot of drape and also perhaps some body as well so that you can keep the lines here. This one is in a viscose crepe in the uh, purple one. Uh, we have a voil in the white and we have a textured uh, jacquard in the black as well. You could also choose something a little more structured for this top. So for example, uh, a cotton poplin, it would give a bit of a different effect. Um, but also something like linen would work really well as well. So meet Ruby. This is our elegant sporty chic pattern. Um, as you can see, it's slightly oversized. It has a dropped shoulder, some slightly gathers at the shoulders and at the wrists. And there is some ribbing, but that's optional. You can leave this one out. Also, there are two side splits. So as you can see, we made several different versions and it also looks really nice as a jumper, which is what Erica has, and also laid with a waistcoat, which is what Ilsa has. For fabric, this is a jumper dress, so we would recommend something in medium to heavyweight um, that is in, in a knit, whether that is a sweatshirting or a French terry or even a scuba if you wanted something with a lot of structure. Just to note as well, on Ava's purple version, um, this is 10 centimetres longer than the pattern is drafted for due to the height of the model um, for our photo shoot. And also you can make whatever length you like, of course, it's very easy to lengthen and shorten. So you can see that we finished the neckline and the sleeve cuff if you choose to do it in ribbing. And it's really important that you use something stretchier than the sweatshirting because of the gathers in the sleeve. <laughs> Our Sasha top and dress. As you can see, we made a few different versions. It's a very, very romantic top, and I think that there are many different kinds of fabrics that will work for it. Our purple is in something slightly more structured, as you can see here, whereas the green and yellow version is much more fluid and has a lot of drape. I also really love the crisscross ties at the back. Um, I think they're really beautiful. But Kate, do you know you can also leave out the ties, but if you do leave them out, don't forget to sew in a strap retainer so that the fabric don't fall off your shoulders. And then we look at the sleeves. Did you notice that there are pleats at the hem just to add more volume? Speaking of volume, um, as we mentioned before, it is a top, it is a dress, and you can go uh, as nuts as you want with the ruffles. So Kathleen's got a peplum, and Ilsa has a dress version. In each of these, the tier here is 1.3 times the circumference of the piece above. But if you wanted to have more volume and more gathers, then you could, of course, go to 1.5 times or even two times. It just depends on the look you're going for. And of course, if you want to go all out, then you can add more tiers and make a maxi dress. Now let's look at the styling. Uh, Kathleen, I really like your top. What do you like so much about it? I think it's quite elegant. Um, I think it's really lovely that it's a bra friendly top um, with a really elegant open back. Uh, I really quite like the peplum as well. It gives a bit of a contrast to say Lena's top. is our Tallulah top and if you've been following um, Fiverr Mood closely you'll probably see some resemblance to the Clio dress. 
Um, this has grown on sleeves and we finished it with a lantern sleeve at the bottom here and also added some elastic for a different look. But the star of the show is really the back and I just love this circular cutout. Um, we will have a tutorial on it on our website as well, but I just think it just makes the top really different and fun. And actually, Kate, this is a really good example of how a pattern can look completely different according to the fabric you use and the styling you use. So when we look at Eva, I love her outfit. She used a more structured purple fabric and combined it with a midi skirt. It looks very, very cool, but when you look at um, Erika, she used the Bia culotte in full leather and she combined it with a very elegant viscose. Now when you look at the handband, you can see that there are buttons and actually you put the buttons where you want it according to how tight you want it to be and you can make it as tight as you want it because of the slit here. And actually I think that's not all Sana, what you can also do is to um, make this a little bit longer and then turn this back into a casing so you have an elastic uh, crop top if you like. But you could also um, add a skirt to this as well, also with some nice gathers like you see here. As Sana mentioned, the choice of fabric will really influence how the top will turn out. Um, the good news is that you can use all manner of different fabrics, including knits as well. So uh, yeah, if you wanted something with more structure, then choose something heavier. Um, you could even go for a fine corduroy uh, or something like that. Uh, otherwise, you can also choose a knit such as a jersey. Meet Tammy. Tammy is our love at first sight dress and it reminds us of uh, Paulette blues and the Edit blues, but you can also see here in our rosy dress with all the ruffles and the ties. Now, as you can see, we have a sleeveless version and a version with sleeves. For the sleeveless version, we um, finished it with bias tape uh, for a neat finish. Tummy was designed as a midi dress, but you can make it as long or as short as you want to, and all of the versions close with an invisible zip closure. With this dress, you can really go for a lot of waist definition. So the ruffle here, as you can see, already draws attention to the waist. And then we've also got the ties here as well. If you wanted to lengthen them, then you can also tie them at the back. Just so you know, Tammy is not a quick sew, but I think it's well worth the effort. Um, the most tricky bit is going to be on the ruffle. So please take your time and just follow the instructions closely and you'll get a good result. The instructions in the magazines are always with just the pictures and illustrations. But if you head to our website, you can find the full worded versions there to help you along. All right, now talk about fabrics. As you might expect, uh, Tammy works best with woven fabrics. Um, and if you want to go for an understated look, you go for a fabric with a little bit more of a drape like this one. So if you want to go for a more statement look, then you can choose a poplin like this one and you get more of a wind effect. But a broderie on glass will do, will do just fine as well. And that is a wrap. We hope that you love the patterns as much as we do. And I've got one final question for Sana, which is what are you going to make first? Oh, the list is endless, but I think I'm going to start with uh, Freya, Ruby, Elba. I think I'm going to start with Nelly, and I love that we've got different styles. So I'm going to make something very festive. I know you like that one. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.